Hi, math friends. This is Mrs. Schlecht. And in this video, we're going to go over what's absolute value. All right, my friends. So before we start, you know that there's a few materials you're going to need in order to be successful for this activity. First, you're going to need that Envision textbook. That's the one with that little robot on it. Second, you're going to need your math notebooks so that you can take those great notes and show your learning. Third, you're going to need a pencil. And fourth, last but certainly not least, you're going to need that positive math attitude. All right, so before we get into absolute value, sometimes in life, my friends, the stars align and math just seems like simple, right? This is one of those lessons that should be pretty like, oh, I get it, right? But if you are having any issues not really understanding what I mean by absolute value, of course, just let me know and I'll hook you up, right? But there's a few different pages that I'd love for you to look at. So this lesson goes with 2-3, which again is in your Envision textbook. And the purpose of this lesson is to take those integers that we talked about last week and to now apply them to this different concept, which is absolute value. And again, that might sound familiar because I think we kind of sort of tiptoed around it last week, right? But this week we're gonna like dive on it. If you need some additional support, here's a great page to check out. The key concepts page for lesson 2-3 is on page 84. So on page 84, there's your key concepts page. Go ahead and check that out. All right, my friends, let's talk about this term absolute value. Absolute value just has to go with distance, distance from zero. Really what we're looking for is when we're looking at these numbers, either positive or negative, I just wanna know how far they are away from zero. So here's an example I like to use. If I were to tell you that Mrs. Schlecht lives one mile away from Fred Meyer, that's just one mile, right? We know how much one mile is worth, but I didn't tell you if that was north or east or south or west, right? I didn't give you all the information you needed to actually find the value of what that one mile meant, right? Same kind of thing with absolute value. We're looking for the distance from zero, but you're not necessarily telling me the direction that it is moving on that number line from zero. We're just looking for the distance from zero. Let's look at a number line and hopefully this will kind of clear it up for you. All right, so from last week, we started looking at integers, correct? And we started mapping uh, those integers, those rational numbers on a number line. And we talked about the idea, my friends, that we have spent most of our educational career over here in our positive end of this number line, right? Those are our counting numbers, one, two, three, all the way up to a billion, right? But last week, we also noticed that, hey, you can also go backwards on that number line, right? We talked about those negative numbers for the first time, those negative integers, you might think. But we also talked about that there is a relationship, right? That zero is our starting point, zero is right in the center, but then I have my positive one, my negative one, my positive two, my negative two, my positive three, my negative three, right? We noticed that there was a pattern counting up and then counting down this way, right? But absolute value, my friends, really gets to, well, how far is stuff away from zero? So let's think, even though this is negative three right here, and this is a positive three right down here, Aren't they both three spots away from zero? Yeah, they are, right? So even though this is three spots towards the negative side, right? And this is three spots towards the positive side, they're still three spots away from zero. So we could say that the absolute value of negative three or positive three is three. So you might notice that absolute value is just giving that term, right? Giving that number but without a sign, it's not negative, it's not positive. Again, we're just talking about distance. So let's do some practice problems. In your book on page 84, let's look at numbers five and six. All right, again, this is number five on page 84. So while you're looking at these problems in your textbooks, my friends, you probably notice that each of these numbers is kind of like in a wall, right? It's kind of like in a box. And what that is trying to get you to understand is that they're not asking for you to add negative nine. We're not asking you to multiply negative nine. I'm asking you to tell me the absolute value of negative nine. So again, how many steps towards the negative end of our number line is negative nine, right? How far is it away from zero? Well, you know, my friends, that nine, negative nine is nine spots away from zero. So we can say that the absolute value of negative nine is, ta-da, it's just nine. So the absolute value of negative nine, again, how many spots away from zero is it? It's just nine. 
Let's look at number six, All right? Again, my friends, this is number six on page 84. I mean, it's asking me to take the absolute value of a mixed number, right? Please do not let mixed numbers or improper fractions or decimals throw your head in a tailspin, right? We're just asking again for distance. So imagine like we did in lesson 2-2 where we were plotting those rational numbers on number lines. This is gonna be a positive five and three fourths, right? but how many spots away from zero is that? Uh, it's still five and three fourths, right? Again, my friends, absolute value just gets to the distance away from zero. It doesn't matter if it's negative, it doesn't matter if it's positive, we're really just trying to see is how far away from zero is that number. So again, what's the absolute value of five and three fourths? Just five and three fourths. You might also realize, remember we talked about those integers and the fact that they have negative and positive, right? They have those opposites, right? So if I have negative four and a positive four, guess what, my friends? They have the same absolute value because it's the same distance away from zero. So please, please, please do not let those positive and negative signs kind of mess you up. We're just talking about distance. That's it. Not direction, right? Not which direction am I moving away from zero, but how far away from zero I am. Let's look at another great example. This is also in your book, and this is on page uh, 85, and we're going to look at number 34. All right, again, this is on page 85, and this is number 34. The reason that I wanted to look at number 34 is because it's giving you four different absolute values, then it's asking you to order those absolute values uh, from least to greatest. Now, my friends, you have ordered numbers before. You've compared numbers before, right? Remember those like Pac-Man symbols that you've used when you've told me which numbers are larger than other numbers? That's still the same idea that we're getting at. Remember our math practices when we're taking what we already know, like ordering and comparing numbers, and then we're going to apply that to some new learning, which we mean by absolute value. So first, this is what Mrs. Schlecht is going to do. I'm going to look at the what it's asking me, right? I'm looking at which numbers of absolute values that it's asking me to get. So we have um, the absolute value of negative 12. Well, you know that negative, positive, that part doesn't really matter for absolute value, right? We're talking about distance. So if I have a negative 12, how far is that distance? How many jumps away from zero is that? 12, did you say 12? Oh my goodness, you are so smart. Yeah, it's just 12. So just 12. So real quick, my friends, as we go through this and figure out what the absolute value is of each of these terms, I'm just going to list them right down here. But please notice, I am not putting them in order from least to greatest right now. All I am doing is taking it from my absolute value format to what that absolute value actually is. So then Mrs. Schlecht can like look at it, right? And my brain can kind of work and then I can like put them in order. So again, right now we're just gonna transfer it from asking what the absolute value is to actually what the absolute value is. So here's what I'd like you to do. I wanna see if you can do this without Mrs. Schlecht's help. <gasps> Yes, you can do it. I know you can. What I mean is, is I'm going to pause this video and you should pause it. And I'm going to write down all what the absolute values are. And then you see if I'm right and I'll see if you're right. And then we'll like compare answers. All right, my friends. One thing I want you to notice, we have fractions. We got decimals. We got whole numbers, right? Remember for this part, when you're looking at absolute value, you don't need them all to be in the same format. I can compare the absolute value of uh, decimal moles and fractions, right? However, however, that's only if you understand how those compare. So for example, I know that I can write three fourths as a decimal as 0.75. I know I can write a uh, half as a decimal is either uh, 0.5, correct? So what I mean by that, my friends, is that if you know how to compare this as the decimal, or if you know how to compare this as the fraction, you don't necessarily need that second step, right? Your brain might already be able to translate that, okay? However, if it's still going to make more sense for your brain to take that extra step and get your decimals and your fractions and your improper fractions and your mixed numbers and all that type of stuff to get your numbers in the same format, that's a great strategy too. Although, remember, it's not required at this step, okay? I found out that the absolute value of 12, or I'm sorry, the absolute value of negative 12 is 12. 
The absolute value of 11 and 3 fourths is 11 and 3 fourths. Absolute value of negative 20 and a half is 20 and a half. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. So again, the first step of that problem, my friends, is just to identify what the absolute values are. Now I can do the second piece. The second piece asks me to put them in order from least to greatest. That means from the smallest to the biggest, right? So again, pause this video right here if you want to try it by yourself. And let's see if you can order these numbers from smallest, the least, to the greatest. All right, my friends. So there's two different ways that you can show this. But again, it's going to be the same information. So least to greatest, 2, 11 and 3 fourths. 12, and then 20 and a half. But you can also write it as the absolute value of 2, the absolute value of 11 and 3 fourths, the absolute value of negative 12, and the absolute value of negative 20 and a half. Again, my friends, these mean the same thing. Make sure that you read the directions. Um, if it asks you to give the absolute value, you're going to want to leave it in this format. If it's not really clear, then you can go ahead and solve it and then just give those whole numbers. All right, my friends, so again, that was just a quick video for lesson 2-3, which introduces us to absolute values. If you have any questions after watching this video, please let me know.